So Magnus is back and looking strangely familiar. This is him giving an interview in which he said he was a bit rusty playing at this super bet rapid and blitz. And you can see by his hair and beard, he's really growing that thing out, modeling himself on who knows, right? But there is a rumor that he may even be heading in a full Jumanji direction, possibly even trending towards a kind of Hagrid style look more long term. But these are unconfirmed, you know, I can't really say for sure, but that is the word on the grapevine. Either way, I think some serious fashion advice is needed in the chess space. Thank goodness for Gucci Reza, he can help everyone out on this point. Now, on to the game here. So Magnus playing a London in this one against Wesley So and just desperate to sacrifice pieces all through the game. So Magnus kicks off here with pawn d4. Wesley goes d5, we get knight f3, knight f6, and bishop f4. Starts the London, maybe Magnus, inspired by the now world champion Ding Loren, who played this with success against Nepo. No, but Magnus has been playing this a lot himself for years now. So c5 from Wesley, very standard, e3, knight c6, and now Magnus plays a small sideline with bishop to e2. Normally that bishop sits on d3, and normally it doesn't develop just yet. You know, you see c3 or knight b to d2 first, and now Wesley, he starts chasing this bishop. Now the most natural uh, move, 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 looks bishop g5, but then you're running into this and you can actually chase this bishop, you know, the tactics aren't quite working for white and it's a bit better for black. So instead, the bishop comes to e5 and you don't want to be capturing this one because you then take away the retreat square of this knight and g4 is coming if you ever go e6 to develop naturally. So you'd have to then go g6, but not the most ideal pawn structure. So no captures, instead we see f6 from Wesley. He wants to chase that bishop out of there and probably expected bishop to g3. But Magnus now hits him with pawn c4. What's going on? Has Magnus forgotten how to play chess? Well, if you capture, which is actually the engine's top move, then there's pawn takes here, queen takes, this is the top line, and then after the queen drops back, say to d8, top line, well then you can push on with d5, and the best move here is actually to drop the knight all the way back. And it's really interesting that white is literally only one pawn down, but because there's such a lead in development, you know, this one can drop back, well, it gives it as an equal position here, just for a pawn. Kind of crazy, but okay. Who knows what Magnus had planned? Wesley didn't want any part of it. So instead, he plays e6, but that's why it's called a miss. The computer did want to go down that line. Magnus now takes, the pawn recaptures, he drops back the bishop, now Wesley takes, pawn takes, and because there's this threat to take here, saddle black with the isolated pawn that could be pressured, well now we get c4. But Magnus is a bit better here. You know, uh, Wesley's pawn structure is not brilliant, and Magnus has got this lead in development. Now he goes a3 first. He wants knight c3, but no bishop b4. It does look a bit weakening to go a3 on the b3 square, but Magnus has got this plan to soon liquidate the pawn. So bishop e6, knight c3, and now this is instructive. If you go bishop e7, natural move, well then there's queen c2. You can't castle or the white pieces are gonna crash through on h7, and you can't go bishop f5 to intercept that queen. And if you now go queen d7, preparing bishop f5, then you run into e4, white's getting a really good game. Bishop f5, queen e3, that pawn's loose. So coming back here, queen d7 played first, because now if queen c2, you're ready to meet with bishop f5, very harmonious. So Magnus instead goes pawn b3. We get captures, you know, you can't support with b5, the knight covers that square, queen recaptures, and now rook c8. Again, all about timing. You don't want to go knight a5 too soon, hit c4, because white would be taken with the bishop, good pawn structure after this one captures, this starts rolling. So now there's a threat to go knight a5, hit the queen, bring the knight, and then recapture with the rook if the bishop ever takes. So Magnus anticipates with queen b2. Now if knight a5, there's no tempo on the queen, so there's bishop b5, you'd have to meekly return, you've lost time. So instead, Wesley goes bishop e7. We get bishop d3, targeting the pawn. You still can't castle, and so Wesley goes king f7 to castle by hand. 
Queen b1 intensifies the pressure, but g6 blocks everything out, and knight e2 now from Magnus. So that was a tactical target, and it's spinning into f4, where it looks at this center. So king g7, they're always anticipating each other's plans. Knight f4, now you can drop the bishop back because the king made room. We get castles from Magnus, so the work on the h-file is done. He induced the weakness, there's no more attack yet, uh, there yet, so he wants to bring this rook into the game. We get knight a5 played, and now again an instructive moment. If you sit there as white and play too passively, well black's going to bring a lot of pieces to bear on the queen side, plus there's a two-on-one pawn majority, you might be able to generate a passer. So what does Magnus do? e4, classic break in the center, meeting the flank play. We get captures, bishop recaptures, and bishop d6, preparing to eliminate that very powerful knight. And now Magnus plays a committal move. He could start with rook d1, coming behind his passed pawn, but he pushes it immediately, shuts down the scope of this bishop, not ideal, but also closes off this one, and okay, passed pawns need to be pushed, they say, that's a big thorn in black side. So we get captures on f4, pawn recaptures, and now knight c4, preparing to blockade. By the way, if you take, it is actually playable, but after rook d1, rook c5, f5, it all looks so scary. You are just about holding onto the piece, but there's big problems around the king now, and the computer says that the best line is rook e8, captures, pawn recaptures, and you can actually win the pawn back, and white's got a decent position. So Wesley wanted no part. He didn't take the pawn, he jumps knight c4, and after rook d1, now he blockades with knight d6, and knights are excellent blockaders of past pawns because they can peer over the battlement, you know, they're not actually stuck in, they can still influence the game, and on the sixth or third rank, they're real octopuses as well. And this is where Magnus now again just tries to give Wesley pieces. You could go knight d4 here, it's the top engine move, but Magnus goes knight to e5. Please, Wesley, take my piece, but again, Wesley refuses. Now, if he'd gone down this line, captures, queen captures, well, white's getting huge play for the piece. Obviously, you can literally see visually the problems here. Now, the top move is actually rook here, giving the piece back immediately. But if you try and save that piece with, say, bishop e8, well, then there's just this big attack that starts rumbling against the black king. And okay, white can try and make inroad soon and then get the pawns going if you can ever remove the blockader. Lots of pressure, not pleasant, lower on the clock. So queen e7 played instead. Magnus takes here, the king recaptures, and he drops this bishop back to f3. We see the rook hit the open file, and now queen b4 sets up this nice geometry. There's a threat now to go rook e1, just generate some uncomfortable pressure. You know, the queen has to stay with the knight and everything. So rook c4 played, kicking away the powerful white queen. It also hits the f4 pawn, so queen d2 very natural. And now queen c7, Pawn a4 and queen c5 activates that queen nicely into the game. Wesley playing on the dark squares around this bishop. We get rook a c1, now rook e7, good prophylactic move. Magnus captures, we see queen recaptures, and the pawn kicks on to a5. Rook c7, now pawn f5, and this is a nice tactical shot because if you take with the knight, then this pawn pushes through. You've got big problems, because after rook d7, you're actually losing a queen now, getting skewered. So you can't capture that pawn with the knight, just running back here, and if you take with the pawn, well then the queen invades straight six. You're hitting two pawns here, it's just horrendous. And this is why now king g7, to stop the queen invading to that square. So Magnus captures, the pawn recaptures, he goes queen e3, looking to invade, also looking at the a pawn, so queen c5 covers, queen e6 invades, and rook f7. Now it's a really hard defence for Wesley, low on the clock, and after g3, Magnus has some nasty ideas. King g2, rook h1, slide the queen back and get some really nasty stuff going down here. But Wesley, to his credit, finds a great defence here because he wants to go queen c8, swap the queens, but then you drop the knight. So he starts with queen c7, we get king g2, and then he does the rook e7 move. 
kicks the queen. Now you often have to be careful, don't improve your opponent's pieces. Haven't you just helped white? Well, Wesley's just in time with queen c8 to challenge that one before the rook comes. And it's hard to actually avoid the queen trade. You know, you could go g4, it's the top engine move, but it's a risky move because after knight f7, you know, the knight could be spinning here, the h file is covered. If the queen's ever come off the board, well, this could be quite a nasty pawn structure. So instead, we see the queens come off, the knight recaptures, and Magnus goes d6. And we're basically liquidating b for d pawn here. Because now the bishop captures here. Again, you can't take because of tactical problems. White's completely winning. So we have knight takes here, and now the bishop is supported. You can't take with the knight, or the rook drops. And equally, if you take with the rook, well, obviously, you're dropping an exchange. Completely lost. So instead, king f8. Now, these moves here, I won't play super fast, because the players now head this towards the expected result of a draw. But it was a very fighting game. You know, we get round to this position here the rook comes behind the a pawn it's covered we get bishop d3 and now this is nice from wesley he jumps with knight e4 pressures that f pawn so we get captures pawn takes and now this one's about to drop so yes you can take here but okay black takes here in the game we see this one to cut the black king and now we get this sequence of moves so i'll whiz it through this is the final position and we see a threefold repetition yes you've got the outside pass pawn as black Okay, Magnus is easily good enough to draw that. So a peaceful result, but a fighting game, I thought. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do subscribe to never miss a future video and see another amazing game. Check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.